I mean, obviously it's nonsense, but there's a lot of lore surrounding it. Especially the Greyfriars Churchyard. I'd say it's an auspicious start. Lends the right ambiance, more or less. Mm. It's so beautiful. You can see the castle from anywhere you are. And you know how I adore graveyards. So yeah, it was a good day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, timeline is looking good. Okay, Richard. Okay, check in soon. Bye. lifted her hair as she watched the grave digger at his work. She hardly felt anything anymore since her departure from the world of the living. She must have imagined the breeze. Katie was lucky, she told herself, to have someone to dig for her. The remains of the accused were usually burned. Perhaps her condition had granted at least that much clemency. Her condition, though she tried to alter it, never did change. And the child in her belly was drowned with her, and her last lover had betrayed his vow. I've always felt that horror is designed to increase your odds of survival. <laughs> That's how I've always felt anyway. So, like, maybe it prepares you for when real fear enters in, you know? How will you deal with it? I, I'm not just trying to make hearts race. Not that I'm opposed to the occasional cheap thrill. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that an unreasonable position to take. <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I truly am interested in exploring that space between the fear and the response. You know, there is endless fodder in that small space. What will my character do? What will we do? You can close the book, you can run, but you don't. You stay put for the fear response. You are yes, not going- Yes, but you don't believe there's anything to fear, do you, Leon? Sorry, Nicholas? You've said yourself on numerous occasions that you don't believe a word that you write. I'm sorry, but I think you've misquoted me, friend. I believe every word I write. I just don't believe I know anything about the unknowable. There's a difference. How can any fiction writer worth her salt not believe things go bump in the night? You're just feeding people lies? You don't care about your audience. What, you just think they're sheep? Now, Nicky boy, hold on, buddy. 
Let's keep this friendly. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. Nicholas, we are writers of fiction. You do know that, right? I won't pretend to be some sort of ghost hunter so it seems like I'm honoring the genre or something. I research the dead, and I use my imagination for the rest. There's no such thing as waking the dead, and I don't think I'll lose fans or sleep over saying so. I just don't care for hypocrites on bestseller lists, that's all. Well, it's time when... Look, I know I shouldn't let it bother me. I really do. It's just... <sighs> yeah, but that podcast actually has a really large audience considering how niche it is. I mean, I just don't like being accused of dishonesty when my refusal to confess some false belief in the paranormal is like the most honest thing I can do. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yes, 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 I know. Yes. Thanks. Love you too, sis. And speaking of love, how is Simone? Three months is like a record for you. Is she moving in yet? <laughs>
Hello? Yeah. I wanted to know whether anyone else but me currently has a key to the place. Perhaps the cleaning... Well... I woke up to some items in the kitchen and they were misplaced. Well, the lock seems fine. No one's broken it. And it's just that I... Right? All right, I will. Okay. Yeah. I know it's normal for kids to sleepwalk in adolescent years. But would you say it stopped at like, what, 13? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the last time it happened was when you found me on the lawn. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't hurt anybody this time either. <sighs> Mom. It's the Royal Mile, not so. <sighs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the stress of the deadline is maybe just causing me to do it again or something. You know, like active sleeping brain and all that. Mother, I'm not leaving because I rearranged some kitchen utensils in my sleep. And I'm not calling the cops over something that's just gonna make people think I've lost it. I don't really want a spot in history in the halls of unstable writers. Good company though I know it to be. There are enough. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mom, enough. Yeah, my publisher's calling, actually. I have to go. Okay.
Love you. Bye. <sighs> Nothing ever changes. Katie Wallace drowned in the attempt to confirm her innocence. Her subsequent death was presumed to be consequence of her guilt. She did not pitch in rage as she lowered bound into the Norlock's chilly waters, refusing to either confirm nor deny her use of witchcraft. Perhaps knowing that her protestations would grant no forbearance and that her survival would only result in a second death and hanging her in fire, well, Perhaps this led to her graceful capitulation. And though King James the Sixth James the First of Scotland was most certainly a mad witch hunter hell bent on punishing the weaker sex. Perhaps he got this one right? Perhaps Katie's Jesuitical passivity as she looked upon death and responded gently was because she was returning home to the bosom of he to whom she was sworn. Lucifer himself. Perhaps the waters enfolded her like a lover and she returned to her own.
The location of the witch burnings has now been covered over by the Edinburgh Castle Esplanade where tourists walk like ghosts floating over bones in a graveyard. The witches while there commemorates those innocent women, innocent save one. This is the story of Katie Wallace, who made a deal with the devil to save herself from an adulteress's fate. She had been promised relief in exchange for her vow. She was to wake after making good on her promise to be Satan's mistress, free of the destiny growing in her womb. A dark mortal destiny of shame and abandonment. One paid for in the coin of perdition. One paid for in the coin of perdition. An exchange of damnation for power. Telling you, it was the most bizarre thing I've ever done in my long part of six day career. We haven't previously done room now, which I know is silly. Yeah, you're right, that's the thing. I could never actually buy a house back then. Some nebulous don't usually have the dexterity to open things that are locked. This isn't kind of boring. <laughs> you were there, though. Like when we were little, and I'd make you stand outside the bathroom door whenever I had to pee, because I would book it. <laughs> hey, at least I've moved past a fear of drains. My adult self has her paranormal fears well in hand. Much better than my childhood self did, anyway. Anyone who writes about this stuff better not believe it. Recipe for disaster. I am fucking exhausted by the way. Stay too, no sleep, but they get a good fucking job. Well, I just say, fears are often extinguished by daylight. I feel better after talking to you. Love too. Bye.
Hello again, my fellow bibliophiles, fans, critics, and otherwise. I'm going to share today some interesting bits of research that I've been doing for my upcoming book, and then maybe we'll see in the comments section if you can guess the subject matter of it. In Scotland during this time, accused witches were often kept awake for three days, at which point they often began hallucinating and confessing. They were usually hanged or strangled and then burned, and sometimes drowned. If they died in the water, they died innocent. If they didn't die in the water, they were said to have proven themselves guilty and were hanged or strangled and then burned. Scottish witchcraft trials were notable for their use of pricking. That is when the subject's skin was pierced with needles, pins, and bodkins, as they would have said back then. And it was believed that these women would possess a devil's mark
okay. I'm sorry. I won't write it. I won't tell lies about you. And I'm sorry for what happened to you. I'm so sorry. Won't write it. You're real. And I'm sorry. Nicholas! You're lovely when you're quiet. Time to keep it that way. What are you doing? Thank you.
it occurs to me that the events of the past year necessitate some response. You deserve to hear from me. My former colleague, Nicholas Jeffries, was an unstable man. He was a talented writer, and he had one of the most expansive imaginations I've ever come across. But he was deeply disturbed, and his own belief in the supernatural, coupled with what he perceived to be my undeserved success in light of my own affirmations that I do not believe in such things, led him to a deep and obsessive resentment of me. He often expressed a disdain for my work, claiming that a non-believer had no business in the business. It appears he sought to convince me of the supernatural by perpetrating this colossal hoax. He did not have a healthy understanding of the line that separates fantasy from fact. And his attempt at revenge by gaslighting me was betrayed. In the end, by his own insanity, he jumped from my building. Readers. He was not pushed by my guardian ghost, as comforting as that can seem in some ways. I believe he never attained the level of acclaim his work deserved, but hell, this is the modern age. Who reads books anymore anyway? I have been asked if I have watched the footage that Nicholas recorded. Now, all of it, legal evidence, though some of it I am aware has been leaked to the public. The answer, of course, is a categorical no. I was there, of course, and I do not require a return visit. We create our own hauntings when we dwell in past anguish. After all, aren't ghosts just memory substantiated? Now, my readers, I can return to my firm belief that thing going bump in the night is nothing more than human fear. The monster under the bed was no monster after all. As always, just a man. And I am a writer of fiction. I have claimed to be not else. <laughs>